divine legacy is more than bricks and mortar, sir. I wanted to save Gotham. I failed. Why do we fall, sir? So that we can learn to pick ourselves up. Hello and welcome to Afterlife Topics and Metaphysics. This is Cyrus and today we're going to have a discussion about social media and Facebook and I might even be able to tie some of this into what we usually talk about which is like life after death, metaphysical topics, hence the name of the channel. But we'll, we'll get to that later and also important news about uh, where this community is going, how I'd like to expand, where I'd like to go in the future, and how I can recover from the, inevit the inevitability of being targeted and uh, attacked, destroyed by big tech social media platforms, which is not that uncommon. So let's jump into it. Uh, before we do, right now, more than ever, it's really important that you uh, subscribe to this channel, hit the notification bell, share this video if you think that other people can benefit, in this case, from kind of talking about and uh, getting, getting the facts straight about social media use and the dangers and the, the problems and ultimately what I do think of as corruption and as well as the main theme of this channel which concerns uh, survival of consciousness and cool paranormal stuff and astral projection so uh, these, these are all reasons to maybe share the video and again more than ever I appreciate anybody who comes in as a patron at patreon.com forward slash afterlife topics uh, basically I do this kind of work as my job I quit a job that I had with Honda Corporation back in Los Angeles uh, about uh, December of last year or the year before last actually uh, which would be 2018 and I live on the road live out of a backpack and I really dedicate to this because it's very meaningful work to me I've released two books I make a little bit of money from book sale royalties uh, from patrons from people who support this work it's enough to kind of get me by but sometimes it's not quite enough and if I go into if I go back into the day jobs then uh, I won't be able to keep making videos for one thing and um, I won't be able to really keep this going quite like I'm able to now and be able to manage multiple platforms and communities dedicated to expanding knowledge about survival of consciousness among other things so if you want to support me and support this channel now would be a great time to get involved because things have gotten really rough out there so as some of you know as of this moment Facebook has removed my entire digital footprint online so this would mean about four and a half years of content and posts on the afterlife topics and metaphysics group is at this moment gone so as people know I make a lot of personalized messages for people who come on the group looking for answers about um, maybe you know they've lost a loved one or they're in grief or they had a para experience or they think maybe they had an astral experience and I, I dedicate time every single day when possible to respond to people talk to people uh, get hopefully accurate information out there most importantly to be able to share information about this subject to hopefully help people with their grief because uh, as people who, who know me, know about my work, know I've lost like multiple members of my family just in the last couple of years. And it was this work that has pre you know, prevented this from really damaging or scarring me. Uh, I was able to really bounce back from the grief. And then I began making like direct contact with those deceased loved ones through techniques, through astral techniques, through clairaudient techniques. And I chronicle some of this in my second book, but it uh, makes a huge difference. And I just I, I discovered how meaningful it is when you can share some of these things with other people who maybe they don't know what's going on or they had an experience, but they're being told by friends and family that it, you know that they, they they should doubt it or it wasn't real. And so this is really something I care about. And so I want to do this as my work for as long as I can, but. Um, <laughs> 
maybe I'm going a little bit of a tangent here. So this is why I, I take time out to respond to people, talk to people in the group, do this kind of work. Now, the, the, so right now, every single message I've ever given anybody and every single post I've ever put on, on, on the Facebook group, all of that is now uh, blank slate. It's all gone. And as well as 11 years of history on Facebook, 11 years of comments, messages, people on the friends, uh, you know, on my friends list and um, basically history, photos, uh, archived conversations with people. So if I want to like see like my, my last conversation with my brother before he passed, uh, I'll never be able to see that again if I don't get the account restored. Uh, so what I'm aware of is that, I mean, it. I think when Facebook does this to somebody, it's a bit like a uh, the same formula they use when somebody gets blocked. So when you block somebody, the the account uh, disappears. You cannot access it. All their you know all their messages disappear where you'd otherwise see their name. Now it's missing. The posts disappear. Except when the account is blocked or banned, it just happens you know for everybody. So I believe that they can undo this process and restore the account and as of this moment things will either go one of two ways either i will get all everything restored and my account will i'll, I'll just magically reappear i'll be back in the group back able to you know ac use facebook and all those missing posts will just like they'll just rise up again they'll all come back and we'll be good but the other thing that can happen is what um, some people call the implicit banning. And this is where basically I am abs I'm convinced now Facebook and maybe all these big tech monopolies is communist China. If it's not communist China, it's a system that is mimicking communist China. And let's, let's get into that now. So first, some were wondering why was I kicked off Facebook? And there is no explanation given except that security concerns and probably it's because I, I swap between different countries so I have different IP addresses and different locations all the time and uh, Facebook that it raised red flags and uh, so I got my account locked then they ask for you know a picture of yourself to re-verify your phone number all that sounds hunky-dory problem is this uh, as I've been researching a bit on online it's very often uh, is a process that doesn't stop. So they ask for these things and then they never give you the account back. Now, normally when they ban you, they go through a process where you can at least appeal the decision. And then you can even actually appeal twice. Probably it's a kind of legal due process that they have set up in the company. But when they block the account for, quote, security concerns, then typically, I mean, they may bring the account back, but there is a real threat that they won't. What they'll do is say, okay, we're, we're pending a review of your submission, but then they never follow up on it. And effectively, you know, your account is now disabled forever. And that you don't, you don't get the appeals process because this is the loophole around that. We'll just hang you up in this submission phase and that's the end of you. And I also find, and this look quite logical to assume, this happens when people want to, when Facebook wants to get rid of somebody but they haven't directly violated any of the terms of service, this is how they do it. They say, uh-oh, we think you're a spammer. Uh, please submit this stuff to verify it's you and then they never get back to you. So I would imagine this is for political opinions they don't like, when people share stuff they don't like etc then they will go after you and i've seen them now violating this uh, exploiting their anti-spam policies to target people like this and so a really good example of this is afterlife topics own kim lacapria now kim as well as mary beth and others that are actually from the group and uh, uh, friends of mine they created a great website called red string society and so i'm going to pull up on the screen right now Red String Society is a kind of like a resource for widows and widowers to understand more about how um, our connections to our loved ones is has not gone away. So it's a it's it's a spiritual website for people who are grieving the loss of loss of a spouse. Well, guess what? Facebook has banned banished this website. If you try to post redstringsociety.com on Facebook, 
you'll get a, a warning that you're posting spam and you won't be able to post the website. Obviously, the website is not spam. I don't know if they reversed this, but the last time I checked, it was still blacklisted. Why did they do it? Well, one of the people who made the, one of the people who made the site and who um, writes for the site is Kim LaCapria. Kim used to work for a company called Snopes. Currently works for a company called Truth or Fiction. From what I'm aware, from what she told us on the group, she was involved in a, in a, a spat or a feud with Facebook, her company, and Facebook. Um, some kind of controversy happened. Facebook has effectively banished the site Truth or Fiction from Facebook, I think because that site wasn't giving a very nice um, reporting about Facebook. And so they, they're using their iron fist to destroy dissent. And it may be that the main writers for that website have also been blacklisted. And that could be why a completely harmless website for grieving spouses uh, has been banned from Facebook because of guilt by association. Kim LaCapria's name is attached to the site. Now suddenly that site is blacklisted also. Very concerning stuff. And so um, what we may be looking at, but possibly with my situation, and again, by the time you watch this, I, I may be back online, I may, I may be back in the group, I may be back participating with the community again. But if I don't, if you don't see me again, if I don't come back, it's, it's, it would be uh, an implicit banning. So kind of the same thing. I've been targeted. They're going to use the spam rules to come after me, even though there's clearly no spamming happening. And then they're going to they're going to blacklist me. And then that'll be the end of Cyrus on Facebook. And why? Well, I don't know. Maybe I mean, it, I mean, I first we have to keep in mind that in the last couple of years, Facebook has banned something like two billion accounts. It's a credible amount, and it's very interesting that you know they, you know that they're um, <laughs> approaching the sub, you know, the issues of spammers and things like that by taking a blowtorch and just, uh, you know, or just firebombing the whole community. So there's many people who have lost so many photos and memories and friends and contacts because Facebook decided you're a spammer, then they get rid of them. I'm kind of lucky because I don't have, at least I don't have yet. Uh, a message about my account being terminated for violating rules, just suspicious activity. A lot of people were not so fortunate. A lot of people get the full on, you know, permanent ban and there's, there, there's no appeals process. There's no undoing it. We don't know if we're there yet with me, but, um, but yeah, so they've been firebombing the whole community for a while, but I also highly suspect a big part of that is dissent. And so social engineering, because in their in their policies includes no spreading fake news, no spamming. What is fake news? What is spamming? Apparently, Red String Society, a completely harmless website for widows, is spamming. So they will just label anything and anyone they don't like as a spammer. Uh, as well as fake news. If there's an article that the, the political opinion they don't like, they will blacklist the site and then they will terminate the person who shared it for committing this um, uh, political violation. And this is where I am now convinced that what we're dealing with is communist China. And the other way that this is basically communist China is that, okay, if you're not aware, China has had this thing called a social credit system. So they have t created this dark and evil version of basically social media and have given everybody in China a number. And if you do anything that goes against the strict party lines, that number, much like a credit score, goes down. Something as simple as jaywalking uh, and one of their CCTV cameras catches you, your score goes down. But something really bad is let's say that there's a political candidate you don't like and you share their information on whatever the Chinese social media platforms are, probably pretty awful, <laughs> then you could get really blacklisted and then you no longer have the ability to even travel. Like you, you won't even be able to buy a bus ticket. Like that, that, that's how severe it can get if your score goes down, probably cannot find employment, probably end up homeless, dead, whatever. That is the goal of the social credit system. Now in the West, because we, you know, we're not a communist dystopia, we have, um, 
you know, our culture is not set up to fall into that system. But what's the closest we can get is create full dependency on a massive social media platform like Facebook. By dependency, I mean you have all your friend contacts, you have all your memories, you have important business contacts, you have a whole life. Like you, they, but this is what they want. They want your entire life on their platforms. That includes both Facebook and Instagram, also owned by Facebook and other major sites. They're all connected. What they want is to create like a you know a system where your entire life is now on the internet and this um you know so it's not as basically so the so they can't come after you now on a government basis but they can do this on the private basis so they want to make it as devastating as possible if you end up blacklisted if you end up on the naughty list if you end up committing a thought crime they want to make it so it's absolutely horrific to you because you'll lose all your friend contacts you'll lose all your commu communication abilities you'll lose um, you know big parts maybe of your social life if you're part of groups and organizations if you business depends on Facebook and social media they want to destroy your business so they want all these factors to be the thing that keeps people scared to not tow the party line which means you know not sharing from websites they don't like not sharing political opinions they don't like, et cetera, et cetera. And personally, I think that this was the plan all along with Facebook. I think that this is this is what what the strategy was, and I'm sure that they're working with the other big tech companies here at Google as well. I'm sure that the idea is to create this structure where it's outside the government, but ultimately could have more power than the government. Pretty freaking scary, isn't it? So that so that leads us to um, what do we do about it? And uh, one thing to keep in mind is you're not safe anywhere on any social media platform. So this is a little community afterlife topics, and so it means a lot to me. It's like you know three thousand of you guys right now on the on this YouTube. Not 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 very big, but it's a community. Afterlife topics is like ten thousand people, and then like friendly neighboring groups is like you know there's a Another few, you know, several, you know, tens of thousands of people, and Victor's group, and other groups, you know. So, they, so it is a community. It's not a huge one by by the standards of a lot of other com communities online. But uh, the problem is, is that the more it's consolidated to just one or even two social media platforms, the more that it, you, your neck is on the chopping block. And if you commit a thought crime, if you talk about things that they don't want you to talk about and that kind of stuff can definitely come up on this channel then your neck is on the guillotine and it's over they can destroy all of this so the only solution if to to actually create a healthy like um unre like a healthy community that can resist all of this is to branch out to multiple platforms right and this is kind of a wake-up call i really did have too many of my eggs in one basket with facebook what we need and what I will need to work on and you guys if you want to help out you, you know please uh, get in touch with me here or on my email or my contact info in the description but what we need is a reddit community and reddit has actually some pretty cool para groups and uh, kind of there's a missing gap of information when it comes to objective discussion and research about life after death so there's like the reddit paranormal group which actually has people coming with these really cool stories about meeting with deceased loved ones but because of the lack of education it's the paranormal group people are like "Ooh, spooky tell us the next ghost story so it's not very uh intelligent discussions and so we could fill that gap and make a reddit community the next option i think is um this youtube channel just like facebook it is vulnerable i am not too worried about it because i'm not you know i'm not giving them any excuses you know, I'm not, I'm, for the most part, I'm not political. You know, if, if, if uh, God forbid, if you're a conservative channel, then Facebook is going to keep its, you know, the eye of Facebook, or not, not Facebook, I'm sorry, YouTube, Google, the eye, you know, the evil eye of Google will be watching you if you have like conservative opinions. 
And so, I'm, you know, so this channel's pretty apolitical and I'm not using like copyrighted music. So that I'm not giving them excuses to come after me, but they still could. And I do know that I feel like I've been the victim already of kind of like shadow banning or, you know, not appearing in people's search results, not appearing in update feeds, probably because among other agendas, kind of just like, you know, when you think about communism, it's really funny because communism and communist China is very, very, uh, not just atheistic, but like materialistic. They, they ban, they make it illegal to discuss these subjects in the Soviet Union. Uh, for the most part, religion that wasn't uh, state controlled was illegal, but so were spiritual beliefs, supernatural beliefs, anything that would distract people from worshiping the political leaders as their gods. Well, again, it's very similar. So you have this materialist cabal, and these are the guys who run Wikipedia. They don't allow positive comments or positive information, even about completely verifiable Paris subjects, whether it's remote viewing or Sheldrake's work or uh, astral projection or you know the real evidence. They actually openly censor all of that on Wikipedia. It's one of the was part of the conglomeration of tech monopolies and tech giants, and. Uh, so you factor this in as well, and a channel like this one is especially not safe. So how do I get around that? Uh, well, it is necessary to start going into alternative media platforms. So one that's gaining a lot of popularity is BitChute. Uh, so BitChute is not you know monetize it like you could, like you do with YouTube, unfortunately, but a lot of creators have actually moved to BitChute, like really, really big creators, because they hate YouTube so much. And there's also Minds.com. So Minds is the competitor of Facebook. And Facebook, being how they are, you know, is an a evil, um, you know, you know, really, you know, an evil organization. They um, they prevent you from even sharing links to Minds.com because I guess they're that intimidated by this little startup social media site. But people do go to minds.com also as an alternative to Facebook and it has a big video platform sharing uh, service, which I believe is now becoming monetized as well. So that's that's even better than BitChute. Problem is, is that Minds and BitChute, like they just don't have the massive reach that, that YouTube does and that's the problem. Like you don't, you don't come like you know halfway around the world or actually you know, the other side of the world like you know i mean i'm in thailand currently and then meet random people who are like hey do you have a minds account like you don't you don't hear about this but everywhere in the world people are like do you have a facebook account so facebook accomplished its mission and they have penetrated the entire freaking planet so minds is the minds has a lot of communities that were outcasts that were destroyed by the, the social uh, the, by the tech monopolies and they moved to mines and so mines is like this kind of um, motley crew of different groups and some of them are really cool but you'll also find like some, some of the legit like political extremists and kind of crazy people because they they moved to this free speech platform because sometimes you know a community is destroyed for the right reasons because they're like, you know, calling out hate against people or some, things like that. And they all migrate to mines. So it's a little bit of a, you know, kind of reminds me of life out here in Jomti and Thailand. It's just like you look around, it's like bikers, and there's outlaws, and there's, you know, pe people getting away from the system and hiding out, a lot of weird stuff out here in this part of Thailand. And it, you know, kind of reminds me of mines.com. It's, you know, it's, it's this, uh, it's this uh, sort of pirate island of, of the internet. And, uh, but it's still a big enough platform that it'll probably make sense to begin building up minds as an audience. And I think if people there are a little bit cuckoo, that's great because this material, it appeals to people a little bit cuckoo, right? Because you have to be a little bit cuckoo to start thinking about, hey, what happens when you die? And are these Paris subjects real and whatnot? So, yeah, so maybe minds is not such a bad place to go. So this binds BitChute, there's Reddit, and maybe even uh, a Discord group would be a good idea as well. And I'd like to be able to combine all these together, and in the meantime, I'll bring up real quick, this is CyrusKirkpatrick.com. This is my personal website, 
where you get in touch with me. You can, uh, you know, so that so that's uh, GoDaddy. I don't think GoDaddy is going to censor me. They don't really care. So you have you know, Cyrus Kirkpatrick. You have, of course, AfterlifeTopics.com, which is the main website for this channel for the Facebook group. It's just it's not updated quite as much as maybe I would like, but. Uh, I can I can you know change that and expand it and just with the comments system on this on afterlife topics I mean that's as good uh, I mean you can have big discussions and you can you know you can do a lot on the websites so the websites always going to be there for getting in touch with me you can follow me on Instagram owned by Facebook who knows how long I'll have that but it's at Cyrus underscore the underscore explorer so you can get in touch with me that way and uh finally twitter which and i've i've never gotten a twitter twitter account because i'm kind of disgusted by twitter they just like these other tech giants they censor people they're really horrible and twitter i guess brings out the worst in people something about the way that you have to make short statements you can't like make long detailed discussions on twitter I'd, i've never liked that it also somehow creates a lot of hostility and fighting and craziness but I also think Twitter might be a necessary evil, and it's also a way that you can really expand your reach if you use it um, uh, intelligently. And even for this issue, like tweeting at big companies sometimes gets their attention, like please unblock Cyrus, you know, at uh, Facebook uh, team or whatever their handle is. Like this could be even a way to put pressure sometimes if enough people do it. So Twitter is a, is a good platform. So, so here's in summary what I'd like to see for the future with this channel. Uh, I'd like to see expansion into these different platforms, building up audiences unique to those platforms like Reddit, for example, hopefully consolidating them around this channel or around uh, the website and uh, really spreading more information about subjects of life after death. You guys who are fans, you can all help out because you've learned a lot through this channel and through your own experiences to provide accurate, good data for people looking for information about para experiences, like what would the afterlife be like? And I had an out-of-body experience, was it real? And what, um, you know, was this experience real or fake or was I dreaming or was I having like an after death contact experience like you guys as viewers, especially you guys have been watching this channel for the whole last year. Uh, you can now take this information and really begin branching out and helping other people as well. That's something I'd love to see. Uh, next up is the the uh, writing stuff. So I'm working on a third book. And I will be in Australia coming up in probably in like May, late May. And I will be meeting up with some of the, you know, some of the big names in this area while I'm in Australia and doing some research, getting involved in some cool stuff, which could be implemented into future books. So if you're from Australia, I'm hoping to plan some kind of a meetup along those lines. And so stay in touch um, if you're in the Sydney area and um, I'll have more updates about that soon. But in the meantime, yes, I want to also expand the reach with the books. And um, hopefully, I mean, because I have my own kind of publishing company, but I would like to really ex you know, extend that reach somehow, maybe forge some alliances with some real kind of like uh, heavy hitting publishing companies, things like that. I mean, I mean it's a bit ambitious, but, um, I just need to in increase my, uh, you know, kind of, kind of, kind of my platform as much as I can, and then I can be more on the radar of bigger companies. I'd like to get more information out there, and j just keep expanding this, and hopefully, like I said, have more books and more stuff coming out, more content. So, with all that said, wrap this video up. I mentioned at the beginning of this video, was there any kind of like paranormal or astral type? Uh, experience I can put into this subject. Well, uh, so last night I wasn't able to sleep. I slept like four hours last night because I kept tossing and turning and thinking about this whole situation. So finally I dozed off and I, I hadn't had like an astral experience in a couple of weeks and I, boom, I was in one. And I was in um, an, a, an environment where it was kind of like a bar, there was a pool table. Like I don't know what Astral Cyrus was doing there, but I just know that I was, I popped up there 
And I didn't really care that much. I'm like, well, now I'm someplace with some people around, but I'm still bummed and thinking about this issue with Facebook. And so I just start chatting with some random person. There's this guy with like little um, circular spectacles and a beard. And I was, I was, you know, I was, I was venting. I'm like, I'm so upset because Facebook has blocked me. And uh, I, you know, I manage so much business. I do so much on Facebook. I don't know what to do. So this guy was like, "Look, it's okay. Look, they they call it, they call it a uh, fake book for a reason. Okay, it's the place for fake likes, fake photos, fake friends, fake everything. You're way better off getting away from fake book, man." So I'm like, "Yeah." That's probably a good point. Then he started ran he started venting to me about some kind of like girl related problems. It's like, why do girlfriends why do they have to have all these ridiculous standards on me all the time? So he uh, he was he was venting to me about his problems. I was venting to him about my problems. And then eventually you know it's time to end, so you know, see you next time. I don't know I, I should have gotten his name or something, but just a random guy I met, like you know, on the other side, and we were uh, having a chat about this whole issue. It's kind of funny that even even there, they know about Facebook and they call it <laughs> call it a fake book. And I think it's a good point, isn't it? Uh, um, for a lot of people, it can do. I mean, it's. I don't think me. I think I have a lot of authentic, you know, connections and relationships on Facebook. But there is just this horrible, like, aspect to social media that really is fake like that, and it deprives us of a certain level of social interaction and I think going forward in the future especially if we if, if, if we find ourselves in an ideal timeline an ideal future where there's paradigm changes and this information gets out there then I think we'll be moving away from social media to an extent because we have to get back to real communities we have to get back to coming together again and not being fragmented so much on, on a long distance basis. I also think social media is a huge blessing and I really love social media, but like so many things, it's been it's being controlled by like manipulative powers and it's being used in very negative ways to you know control our thoughts now, to monitor us, to collect data and to promote kind of shallow and meaningless relationships. So we have to find a way to to, to take the power back and begin using these kinds of tools for the light, for good stuff, which I think we do at Afterlife Topics, but it's, it's the minority. I mean, for a lot of cases, this stuff is used, whether consciously or unconsciously, for, for darker reasons. Well, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching, and like I said, you probably not gonna, you, you might not see me for a while on the group, or Facebook may just reactivate me. I don't know. I but I I have this nagging feeling that they're not going to. But even if they do bring me back, like this is a major wake up call. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. Don't rely on Facebook either as a Rolodex. Your contacts can disappear instantly. All your photos and memories and conversations, all of that they can just turn all that off. And the Afterlife Topics group, they can just shut that whole group down, make up an excuse, and it'll be finished. So you can't just use the group. If you like this community, you have to branch out into other things, stay in contact the old-fashioned way, stay in contact at the, at the Afterlife Topics website, all that. It's not going to um, be sustainable if you just rely on Facebook. Afterlife Topics and Metaphysics, the whole community could be completely destroyed from just one guy in some office who has some agenda and that's it and I mean it's 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 totalitarian so uh, just keep this in mind and so if, if, if this subject is important to you the word is diversify so watch this channel participate in the comments here once I get some more platforms going like reddit please sign up participate there participate on Facebook participate on the main website and combining all of this together, they can't they can't destroy all of these communities, especially when we're not hurting anybody. We're not political, so they have you know if, if this was like a political group, then it would be much more difficult. Uh, but still, we're faced with similar problems. Anyway, support this work. Pick up a book like Understanding Life After Death, The Afterlife and Beyond. You can maybe become a patron at patreoncom forward slash afterlife topics. Sign up for our classes, one on one consultation with me, all that good stuff. You can check it out at the website. That's it. I'll hopefully see you guys around soon. Still here.
they, they, they knocked me out of Facebook, but you know, they didn't completely get rid of me. Still here. Need to push harder. Need to, you need to fight harder. This is Cyrus. I'll catch you guys next time.